Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mike Flynn. I'm from the University of Michigan. So our ADCs have become the dominant type of analog for digital converter, and there's one used on almost every ASIC nowadays. So the ne for the next few minutes, I'm gonna talk about the evolution of SAR ADCs. I'm gonna begin with this picture of a simple SAR ADC. So on the left, you can see the analog input comes into a sample and hold block. There's a DAC down here, and that DAC compares against a succession of values. And the comparison here is done with a comparator, and there's a finite state machine guiding this process. Typically, these conversions happen in a binary fashion. So starting with half full scale, then going on to quarter full scale, and so on. Now, the idea of successive approximation is actually a very old one. It actually dates back to the use of balance scales. And balance scales have been around for thousands of years. Here's a picture from the Book of the Dead from something like 1000 BCE. And you can see this is an early use of essentially the successive approximation algorithm. Now, moving to the modern era, this is an example of a successive approximation ADC from the 1960s. And this one actually comes, it comes from a book called, from Seitzer, originally in, in German. And the author, uh, Blandowski, describes Ein Schneller A to D, which is, means a faster A to D. And this A to D actually is based on a DAC, which is a current mode DAC. So it outputs a current, again, in a binary fashion. And that current gets compared with a buffered version of the input signal. And the SAR operation is guided by this SAR register. Now, incidentally, the SAR register means a successor approximation register, and that's where the name SAR ADC comes from. Now, the next slide shows an example of a product from around that time. This is a 12-bit successive approximation ADC from a company called Pastoria, which was bought by Analog Devices in 1969. Now, if you look at this, it's a PCB implementation. Down at the bottom, there's a module here. This is a mini DAC. That's a current output DAC. And on the top here, you can see a bunch of small chips, and those implement the SAR logic. And down here is the comparator. Now, this card-based ADC consumed 2.3 watts and produced samples at 10 microsamples. And by the way, this picture comes from the data conversion handbook from analog devices. Now, most of you are familiar with charge redistribution successive approximation ADCs. And the first of those was published in 1975 by McCreary and Gray in a very famous paper at ISSCC. And you can see that this is composed of an array of binary weighted capacitors, C, C over 2, C over 4, and so on. And those feed into a comparator. The successive approximation register is actually off chip in this case. Now, this sort of architecture is ideal for CMOS processes because CMOS processes are very good for implementing capacitors and switches. And the input to comparator in CMOS can be high impedance thanks to the gate of a MOSFET presenting a capacitive input. Now, looking at ISSCC over the years, this next figure shows the distribution of star ADC papers at the conference. So back here in 1975, this is that SAR paper from McCreary that got everything going. But in fact, there was a, year, a, a paper just a year before that from, uh, from Suarez, which described another SAR ADC paper from Berkeley. That was a two-capacitor SAR ADC, and that didn't really take off. Now, if you look at this plot, you can see that there's been a number of ADC papers over the years, but those papers started to grow exponentially in number sometime in the, in the 2000s. And I trace this inflection to an important paper in 2002 by uh, Franz Kuttner from Infineon. And this is a 1.2 volt, 10 bit, 20 mega sample per, per second SAR ADC. Now in some ways, this was the first modern SAR analog to digital converter. And let me explain why. Well, first off, it ran from a low voltage, just 1.2 volts. It was also implemented in a nanometer CMOS, so it was one of the first high-performance converters in a nanometer CMOS process. It also relied on something called uh, redundancy in the DAC architecture, and that redundancy, that use of non-binary weighting, allowed it to tolerate mismatch and also slow settling. And another important feature was that the capacitors were implemented with parasitic metal capacitance structures, shown, shown here on the right. Now, 
That's used on almost all SARA ADCs now. And the big advantage, of course, is the good matching and the area efficiency of these structures. Now, after 2002, the performance of SARA ADCs improved greatly. This graph shows the walled in energy efficiency of SARA ADCs versus year. And these are for SARA ADC papers presented both at ISSCC and VLSI Symposium. So you can see back in 2002, uh, the SAR ADC had an energy efficiency of about a picojoule per conversion step. And just last year, the energy efficiency had improved to something like uh, less than one femtojoule per conversion step. So that's an amazing three orders of magnitude improvement in energy efficiency of the SAR ADCs in that time. So that's a remarkable story. Now I want to point at another important paper that appeared in, uh, at ISSCC 2006. This was a paper by Chen and Broderson, also from Berkeley, and this introduced the concept of, of a, the asynchronous SAR ADC. Now let me explain the asynchronous operation in the next slide. Now a SAR ADC operation, there's a bunch of bit trials, and conventionally those all took the same amount of time. Chen's contribution was to assign the amount of time based on the time needed for each step. So in this example here, you can see that the MSB trial takes a short amount of time, well, in this case, the MSB minus one trial needed more time, so that was given more time, and so on. Now, this idea of a synchronous operation has a bunch of important advantages. For one thing, it means that the ADC can now run faster. It also means that the metastability rate is lower because more time can be given to certain decisions. And it also removes the need for a high-speed clock. So the use of a synchronous operation is now very, very commonplace. Now, if we look back at McCreary's picture of a SAR ADC, I just want to draw your attention to another point. Um, in this plot on the left, I'm plotting the residue, the VRES, going into the comparator as the trials progress. And what you'll notice is eventually the VRES gets closer and closer to the other comparison line. And one thing to note is that for higher resolution SAR ADCs, the input signal gets smaller and smaller. So that means that a higher resolution ADC has a tougher job for the comparator. So comparators are very important in SAR ADCs. Most SAR ADCs now use some sort of dynamic comparator. And I show here a picture of an early dynamic comparator. And the key thing about a dynamic comparator is it's comprised of two essentially cross-coupled uh, inverters. You can see them here in this part. Now, dynamic comparators have some important advantages. They consume no static current, they're very fast, and they provide a reel-to-reel -reel output. This type of comparator is often known as the strong arm latch. Um, however, it was originally published in a memory paper by Kobayashi in 1992, and later appeared in a paper describing the strong arm processor in 1996, and, and hence its name. Now, there's an inherent trade-off in this comparator, like a lot of comparators, and that's between uh, input noise and energy efficiency. So if you look at the input referred noise of the comparator, it turns out to be related to the parasitic capacitance at the latching nodes. However, the speed of the comparator, the time constant, is also related to that capacitance. So if we want low noise, we need a large capacitance, but that causes a large time constant. Uh, and to offset that large time constant, we need a large GM, which means more power consumption. So there's a trade-off between noise and power consumption, which makes sense. Now, that makes it hard to do high-resolution SAR ADCs. And to solve that problem, a number of new architectures have evolved over the last several years. One of those is the SAR-assisted pipeline. Those, a bunch of those were presented around 2010 and later. And these cascade two low-resolution SARs, in this case, a 6-bit SAR and a 7-bit SAR in a cascade. And the advantage of this is that now each SAR is low-resolution, so the, the performance requirements for the comparator and for a lot of other things are greatly relaxed. Now, another innovation is to actually add noise shaping to the SAR ADC operation. So to explain that, I'm first going to show you a first-order sigma delta. That's actually another type of feedback ADC. Now, you can see in this block diagram, there's an input here on the left, there's an output on the right, uh, there's a quantizer ADC here, and there's a DAC here in feedback. 
And the difference between the DAC and the input is an error, which is fed to an integrator before going into the ADC. Now we can actually add a structure like this to a SAR ADC. And this is what I'll show you on the next slide. So in this figure, this symbol here represents the, the DAC capacitor array. See the input here and the output, which goes into the comparator of the SAR ADC. Now what we do here is we actually grab or, or capture the very last residue from the SAR operation, and we call that some sort of error, and we integrate that error, and we feed that error then to further comparisons. And that allows us to noise shape the error, um, and in this way we noise shape both the quantization error and also the comparator noise, so that helps the comparator performance. Now another aspect of, of SAR ADC design is the energy uh, consumed by the references. And that can be quite considerable, especially a big fraction and very um, you know, high energy efficiency SAR ADCs. There's been a bunch of really clever techniques to, to reduce that energy consumption. And I'm going to show you one of them here very briefly. It's by C.C. Liu from VLSI Symposium in 2009. And in this example, we, we show a three-bit SAR ADC the inputs here are on the left, and you can see that there's a binary weighted array here. Now the first step is to actually determine the MSB, and that's actually to run this comparator and just to, to decide which of these is, is the bigger voltage, and then we're on to the MSB minus one decision. Now conventionally in a SAR ADC, um, you might move one of the 2C capacitors to a high voltage and the other one to a low voltage. But the innovation from Lou was to just pick one of those capacitors on one side and move it to ground. So you can see here in this case where VNP is greater than the VNN, that in this case, he's connecting this 2C capacitor from VREF down to ground and leaving this one here the same. And you can see the opposite is going on in this, this outer case. Now this technique is called set and down, and it greatly reduced the, the amount of energy from the, the reference. And there have been many other very clever techniques to, to similarly improve performance. Now the last thing I want to address is the speed of SAR ADCs. Because SAR ADCs are sequential, they take more time. Now early on, actually just a few years after that famous paper from, from Mercury, uh, Bill Black and Paul Gray from Berkeley introduced interleaving in the SAR ADC. And by doing that, they combined four 7-bit ADCs in parallel to improve performance. Now this this device had a sampling rate of 2.5 MHz, which at the time was comparable to flash ADCs. More recently, uh, this technique has been applied to have very, very high performance. So this is a 90 giga sample per second interleaved SAR ADC from Cool from IBM, presented at ISSEC 2014. Now I did a quick search on Google, and there's something like 500,000 hits for SAR ADC. I'm showing you just a few references for, for some of the papers here. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about my presentation or about SAR ADCs, feel free to contact me.